if you if we care for a person, we have to care for the whole person. So we we have to care about a person's physical well-being. We have to care about a person's emotional well-being. We have to care about a person's psychological well-being, and we have to care about a person's financial well-being. We have to care about all these things, or you're not really caring about the person. You're caring about the employee. Indigene, which is a health tech company, health is the core of our business, and we have employees who are also. the core for our business and for its growth my health matters is the initiative that we run at indigene to take care of the physical as well as the mental well being not only at work but also partner along with employees to see how we can help them at a personal level as well these last few years have been very very unprecedented conditions we have been able to think of new ways to partner with our employees in different ways and support them in every possible way we can great places to work has really helped us to refine this whole process by looking at how can senior leadership really be the role model how managers today being very fragmented can still support their team in different ways to take care of themselves how we as a company can really create a whole framework as well as build an environment of support for our employees who are spread across i think these these play a very important aspect uh to refine our health strategy and help us to be in line not only with the industry but also to be sensitive to the needs of employees and bring about a positive change in their life health and well-being has been core and central to what we do at gsk uh by health and well being i just don't mean the physical health which of course is absolutely critical um but we are also talking about uh the our mental health of our employees we are talking about the environment that we create the culture that we create to ensure people are working in an environment which is safe secure um and something that they feel energized about if i look at our uh, performance and the impact health and well-being initiatives has had on on those clearly there are um, you know a few things that are tangible like uh, the reducing loss of work days uh, people showing up to work in our factories offices in front of our customers our ability to ensure that our medicines reach at the right place right time all of that uh, of course have improved considerably in the last few years but beyond that is also as i said the non tangible ones the ones that i once i talk about um uh, in within the offices of how open and honest environment that is created so that people can operate in those places completely stress free uh and and do what what they do the best and uh, be focused on what the customer needs and the patient needs so for us these are initiatives that we will continue there are several that we do um and we will continue with that and uh, i hope to this to become a central part of our agenda and as i said this is no more an hr agenda this is a business agenda led by business leaders and i would i would i am expecting this will remain that way uh, more so accentuated by the times that we live in today you know like covid or the stress that we uh, that everybody goes through in an external environment so absolutely core and something that i'm extremely proud of of what we do at gsk the pandemic threw the spotlight on the importance of mental well-being in organizations and the role that organizations can play in ensuring the right culture and the right environment for their employees I'm really very happy that great place to work has instituted this study i think it helps us to benchmark ourselves against the best in the industry and also learn from each other um i think constant communication with employees and getting to know what their needs are and how the organization can support them is so very important so some of the ways in which we constantly try to test the effectiveness of our mental wellbeing programs or other supportive programs are several feedback mechanisms so not only do we do surveys or pulse checks we also have uh, forums where we listen to them we really ask them a lot of focused questions on what's working what's not working and what is it that we can do better and then we build the feedback back into our own processes and that's the best way in which we can constantly stay in touch 
with what the need of the hour is and being able to tailor our programs to meet those needs. There is so much of feedback that our processes automatically starts evolving and start get developing, right? IBM's corporate policy on responsibility for uh, employee well-being and safety, it is, it's a policy in itself, right? So therefore, it is, it is like a guided principle which is already engraved as people join us. We, the, uh, the, our wellness engagement is for the employee, complete employee life cycle. It is not that when somebody comes in or somebody is in duress that you have a program. It is a part of our em entire employee life cycle. We have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, assistance program. And we have been driving it for the last 15 years free of cost in India. So uh, we have a lot of sessions and we also can certify ourselves with mental ally badges, neuro uh, diversity badges, you know, you, we equal ally badges. So there are a lot of content which is available and you can also badge yourself and put yourself uh, uh, as, an, uh, as, uh, as a thought leader. Uh, you know, on uh, social platforms. So uh, all of these things are very ingrained. But when you look at, let's say, uh, mindfulness, it's just not one thing, right? It is about the body. It is about your mind. It is about financial well-being. Uh, it is about flexibility. Uh, it is about, um, you know, community well-being. Right. So there are so many things that help uh, us and our leaders actually participate in all of this uh, as a given. Right. And that's why it's so important. Leadership comes as, as you start giving. And as most of our IBMers, you know, we, we always proudly say that we care not just for ourselves, but for the whole world. You know, everyone wants to be on the fast lane all the time want to kind of hit the ball out of the park all the time. You want to kind of have a fast career. Uh, you want to achieve too much in too little time. And then f when failures happen, I think, so what you do is, you know, because you're so ambitious and you want to kind of grow at a fast pace and there's pure pressure and stuff like that, you start putting a lot of pressure on yourself, both professionally and as well as personally. And eventually, I think a few people are able to kind of uh, take it. A few people, I think, just get burnt out, right? And 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 who are you to blame for it? Okay, you got to blame yourself for it. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, at times it's okay to kind of uh, just be an average guy and meet expectations. You don't have to kind of you know hit the ball out of the park all the time. You know, you've got to be realistic in terms of you know, what you can achieve, you can't achieve. I, I, a lot of these management trainees and youngsters, you know, we want all of them to succeed. But we, you know, we tell them that you look, you know, your career is not going to come to an end in just one year's time. You've got time to kind of, you know, if you're good, you will get your work. Okay, don't try to kind of achieve everything just in the, in the first year itself and then get burnt out and then get disappointed with your own self. And then, you know, it leads to all kinds of issues. So uh, that is one. And secondly, I think we do tell people that, you know, life, don't, don't think of yourself based on the designation of the company that you work in. Life is much more than just a title. Life is much more than just your professional identity. There's much more to life beyond what you do or, or your work. You know, people introduce themselves. I'm so-and-so from HDFC Life or from, from another company. I'm from Google or Amazon, you know, I think there's much more to your life. There's a family, you have a set of hobbies and uh, please inculcate some of those things as well. I even in the organization, there are clubs, there are fun clubs and things like that. And as I said, you know, you can be a part of that fun club. You can be a part of that community and, and, and also pursue some of your interests beyond work. If you look at employee satisfaction, obviously there is uh, uh, the parts which cost money and there are parts which don't cost money and often uh, you know, when people are talking about wellness or HR policies, you automatically veer towards things which cost money. But like many things in life, you know, the things which are really important often don't cost money, you know, and there is uh, the ability to be able to create uh, a, a open work environment about uh, having a workplace where everybody fundamentally feels comfortable coming to work, being able to be open about expressing their views, ideas. 
are hoping that they have an audience whether it's their boss or their colleagues who are willing to listen and uh, be able to accept uh, their feedback and is is so important right and to uh, have that a non hierarchical work environment where uh, you encourage even the junior most person in the organization to speak up and then be heard uh, i think is an important part of uh, what uh, you know we've been uh, we've uh, tried to drive home Uh, the reality is uh, businesses like ours uh, uh, you know or somebody mentioned to me that is one in our business all our assets walk out of the door every night and we just hope that they come back again you know to work uh, the next day in in today's world they we just hope they log in the next day the ability to be able to do this thing right day in and day out becomes extremely important uh, to be able to create the right ecosystem and uh, i would say that uh, a, i don't have a number but i would say a vast majority of wellness and well being in the workplace is got to do with just creating that environment where people are just emotionally settled in their job you know somebody mentioned to me once that uh, there is a survey which says that 70% of people worldwide fundamentally don't like their job and and you know it's a pity that uh, you know uh that majority of the people at uh, you know in a in a sense don't feel fulfilled with the work they do if we are able to solve for that problem and just make sure that we are providing uh, the right work environment the right team environment uh, the right high quality of work and and all the other factors around that then that takes care of a significant portion of the well-being of the individual and once you do that then a lot of the other factors you know come into uh, uh, are easier to do you know whether it's uh, uh, pro- providing uh, in today's world uh, you know opportunities for uh, taking care of you know physical health and and uh, ensuring that you know you are uh, tracking your sleep patterns or you're tracking you know sort of some of your wellness parameters etc but all those get impacted heavily by the mental state of the individual which i think the organization has a very strong role to play in ensuring the right culture in the organization so we as human beings have many different aspects to us there are different roles that we play we have different identities depending upon the context we are in we have different kind of responsibilities we have we are at different stages of life we have different kind of interests and hobbies and desires when we come to a workplace we don't leave behind one aspect of us we bring our whole self into the system this is a very very important thing to note for all leaders because one aspect of our life feeds energy into the other aspect of our life it is impossible to break it into two different parts and operate with compartmentalization health and wellness in fact has plays an extremely important role in this aspect because unless we are physically fit and we feel we are mentally fit we are in a great state of mind we would be unable to be at our best in our organi- in any any kind of a situation leave alone an organization in act health and wellness has always been a big priority for us we have focused immensely on physical safety of employees emotional safety we have lots of programs that have been um focused on the holistic development of an individual we had doctors on boarded we have a um, wellness manager who used to conduct lots of fitness sessions and nutrition sessions and counseling with related to lifestyle etc one of the biggest learnings first post covid and covid has been one of the most horrific things humanity has ever undergone but there have also been a lot of insights that have come post pandemic in our organization all the things that we did in the space of uh, health and wellness continued but we just amped it up because we realized how important it is the pandemic has taught us many things one of the most important thing is that an employee who's who's operating in a work environment needs to be holistically taken care of and i'm glad that we have so many examples of so many organizations that are taking this as a priority and driving health and wellness in the country